Okay, so we figured out how to make the endless panning background, the tiling background of the fence. We've got our little guy walking. We need to give him the moonlight and all that other stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's save this now as number 10 with background. And this would be a good time to make a folder for our foreground elements. We can organize our, uh, or sometimes this is called character or acting, maybe action. This is actually our character. Character char is happening there. And so our cat's going to be on top of the fence. Can lock that. I'll make a new layer, and this will be for our backgrounds, and this will be our. Uh, let's put our, let's just make our sky and then our stars. I mean, we know what we're going to build, so we're going to make all the places for them first and then the moon, so we don't end up like having like, oh, layer one, two, three, and all that other unlabeled stuff. And this will be our VG background layer, and all these can live inside of here. Let's save that down. Okay, so now we're, we're, our marks are set. We just need to hit our marks. So sky, we'll start with the sky. Uh, lock everything else and we'll just gradient the sky and oh that's a dark night let's go ahead and uh, gradient fill you and what is it K Ooh, still got it all right so let's go ahead and uh, turn that into a thing where we can you know, he's walking on a normal horizon, not like on some weird space station where the sky's sideways. Or is he? No, let's do it this way. Okay, so uh, let's. Okay, so that's a plain old gradient. So um, let's do like a nice midnight, midnighty blue. Oops. Try that again. Like about like. Like that, and then oh, it's upside down. All right, and then this will be like a kind of an indigo, which is always like a nice kind of a deep sort of sky color. That's a little, a little bit bright for the middle of the night, isn't it? Oh no, don't do that. So let's we can do this with a gradient. Uh, Transformer, we can do it this way. Um, let's do it with the gradient transform, have a little more control over exactly how we want it to be. Turn snapping off. All right, how's that? That's still a little bright. Let's go ahead. And Oh yeah, so that's what I'm talking about. All right, so let's yeah. about like that. Okay, there's our sky for now, and then stars. Uh, stars are simple. I just get the brush and. I was really boring with it. I'm gonna just knock something out that you can. Maybe you want to make it yours a little bit fancier, but I was just not doing it that way here. Just simple. Whoa. Okay, I can select those guys and I can, because I may want to fade them or animate them or something. I'm actually going to knock them back a little bit. So I'm going to take them and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to knock their brightness down a little bit so they're less obvious. And then uh, the moon, that one's pretty simple too. I'm going to go ahead and draw uh, something moon colored like that, maybe a little darker. No, yeah, like that. And then no stroke, the circle and just right about like that maybe and we'll call this symbolize you this is the moon maybe make it a little bit more about like that there we go that and 
um, that's too much. Want saturation back a little bit and brightness maybe a little bit. I like that. How's that? Oh, that looks that looks so great. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna add some moon style craters in here. Grouping these because now I can dupe. Whoops, dupe with the mouse instead. I can dupe these and kind of rotate them and skew them so they feel like they're maybe on the following the contour of the shape of the moon, which is roundy. You can make more of a project out of this uh, if you feel like it's worth your time, but I leave mine like that. Okay, so uh, since I don't need to worry about alignment anymore, I'm going to go ahead and turn my view back up to uh, preview to anti-alias so I get like a little more pretty representation of what I've got going on here. And um, let's do some lighting effects now. So the moon is uh, it's a graphic symbol, but now you can actually do... Um, some, these are your color effects, but if you, I think if you select your layer in the timeline and not on the stage, you open up blending effects and um, filters as well. So down here, I can add like a blur and a glow. So we add a glow first so I can see what's going on here. And I want to lock the dimensions of the glow and bring it up. And now the moon is glowing red, which is a little not the vibe I want for this. I want something a little less threatening and a little more uh, cutesy maybe. And so there I got that going on. And then I can um, do another one here. And remember there's a difference. That's why my keyframe now is white because it means there's there's uh, there's effects and things on here. If I select something, this is why it matters. If you select something on the stage versus the timeline, it, it, these are your properties menu is contextual and it'll show you um, specifically um, um, different uh, attributes based on um, whether it's a timeline attribute or a stage attribute, I suppose. So if I go down here and I can go down to my filters and I can add another one, I can add a, a blur and I want to give this a little bit of a, you know, it's, it's a background thing and it's not, you know, super prominent. And then crank up the quality of that blur to make it really as nice as possible. So there's that happening already. It's given me a little bit of some mood. And then the last thing is to do the um, shadow effect, which is similar to what we had going on before. So I can lock all this stuff and collapse this. And um, next thing I'll do is the lighting effects. 